Oh, yeah. Uh, you know what? No denomination. No denomination may come between us, but this will. I am extremely excited, and I will say that with every single guest that I have on, but we are two grown men are going to talk about one of the most amazing children's shows ever, VeggieTales. Everyone loves VeggieTales. Who doesn't love VeggieTales? If you don't love VeggieTales, well, we probably have to doubt your salvation now because VeggieTales is pretty awesome. And today we have our resident expert on VeggieTales, Mr. Wesley Wood of Christian Nutrition. Give him a hand. Yeah. Yay. I feel like we might, like, if the, uh, you know, the government really is tracking us, like, we might be on their pedo list for being so into VeggieTales, but. You know, <laughs> that, that, maybe it's a risk worth taking. I don't know, but. All right, well, <laughs> Mr. Way too many All right, Mr. Wesley, tell yourself about everything and why why you so love VeggieTales so much. Uh, well, I used to I used to love VeggieTales a ton in the 90s as a kid. I think almost everyone did if you watched it. And then I stopped watching it when I got in middle school, I'd say. And then I rediscovered my love for it a couple years ago when they put all the shows on to like box sets of DVDs, making it way easier to purchase them instead of having to pay like 10 bucks a DVD. And so I watched them. I was like, oh my gosh, these are still great. Like they did not like they like some of them did age, but overall, like they're still great. Uh, unlike a lot of TV shows like Power Rangers, unfortunately, I love Power Rangers, but it's te it's terrible. <laughs> I like it. It's just terrible. <laughs> But yeah, so my channel is Christian Nutrition, and I literally review every single episode of VeggieTales chronologically. Though apparently I messed that up the other week and reviewed Lord of the Beans before another episode, and then realized it too late, and then everybody harassed me in the comments. It was fantastic. <laughs> now you gotta love that YouTube correction, comment correction stuff. No, everyone was very nice about it. No one was mean about it. It was just like, when I uploaded, I was like, they're gonna say something. I know it. <laughs> and they, everyone did. <laughs> Well, that that's the YouTube community. That's just they're 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 helping you out. Yeah, but they were nice about it. They weren't mean or anything. It's pretty much the whole fan base. Is pretty nice. So I mean, we talk about veggie. You you just said VeggieTales. You know, hasn't really aged much, and that really speaks to uh, the guys behind it and the the team behind it, yeah. and really um, wanting to, you know, more than anything, I think, put out something good and really, you know, do something well with their vocation. Um, maybe we can, yeah, I know it's, I just had this thought, but maybe we can, we can talk about that. You know, why do you think it hasn't aged so much as maybe some other kids shows from the nineties? Well, the animation has aged, obviously. I mean, as we get more and more advanced, the animation is just, especially in those early episodes, it's just like, a, it's just like someone went into blender and just made a veggie sales episode, but the, but the story and the jokes just hold up because they're not – it's not pulp culture, so it holds up over time if it's legitimately funny, and it is legitimately funny with a lot of their jokes, and especially the silly songs hold up really well. Um, even kids today like them, and that's 20-year-old songs, you know, because they're just – they're kids' songs, and they're – I don't know, they're catchy. Whereas, like, music from 20 years ago, I love Wonderwall, but it's clearly a 90s song. Whereas VeggieTales, like, right. if songs come out today, could still – be kids songs today a lot right. of the story and the jokes and everything like how they just made it today with if with newer animation it would it would work and you can't say be like the veggie tales special edition yeah like if george lucas did it and i just added a bunch of stuff to every single <laughs> you know veggie <laughs> made it like 4k and just ridiculous yeah but it would still hold up this the story and the jokes and everything they really do so for everyone who doesn't know, and if, you know, anyone out there watching or listening that doesn't know, how dare you not know where have you been all these years of VeggieTales? What, um, you know, where did all this come from? Who are the geniuses behind these, um, these anthropomorphic vegetables? Well, I don't want to do it too in-depth because uh, you can pretty much Wikipedia. I mean, this information isn't like top secret or anything. But mostly it was uh, Phil Vischer who created the concept of VeggieTales with his wife. And he ended up enlisting his friend Mike Noraki. I'll probably say his last name wrong. Mike Noraki. It's like N-A-W-R-O-C-K-I. 
Uh, and they together essentially started VeggieTales and they got the money from some people at church. They finally convinced somebody that like, we can do this. We just need the money to do it. And somebody finally gave it to them. And everyone knows the story of originally they were going to have, uh, I think it was candy instead of vegetables. And they ended up deciding on vegetables. They don't have arms because it couldn't animate arms. And there we got the vegetables we have today. Uh, his wife actually, Phil Vischer's wife told him it would be better to do vegetables than parents won't be upset, you know, or it'd be easier for parents, I guess, to show their kids vegetables than candy and feels like being PC right. before PC was cool. Yeah. Well, she was thinking like a mom and he was thinking like a guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Candy, Or he's thinking like a kid, I guess he's thinking candy and she's thinking like a mom and she, I'd say she's end up being right. I don't think I would want Bob the chocolate bar and Larry the uh, Butterfinger, but <laughs> <laughs> would be pretty interesting though it would be but i think it would get kind of weird if like every single time you see them like in a hot setting like if they were doing a walk around start to melt like, how come they're not melting yeah yeah <laughs> they're not melting what a cruel world i mean they already don't get rotten as it is or spoil so there's already too many questions yeah but yeah i would so, be wondering why they never melted exactly yeah, yeah. so what what do you think, you know, in your personal opinion, what do you think that the impact of VeggieTales has been on uh, Christian culture? Because, you know, it's not just Christian kids that watch this. Yeah. and um, But it has had a huge impact on, you know, I mean, I, I find myself quoting from VeggieTales almost as much as I quote from Scripture sometimes. Yeah. So, what it, you know, why do you think it just resonated so much? Uh, you know, there's just no. I mean, honestly, at the time, there's nothing like it. It did... The whole 3D animation before Toy Story did the 3D animation. At least I'm sure Toy Story was in development, but it it was the first breakthrough on that. So it was just new in terms of the animation, even though it was really bad. And just, I don't know, like if you look at Christian media, like what was before Veggie Like you can't name anything before Veggie that you can certify as good. And there's not much after Veggie Tales you can certify as good. But there's not like I can't think of a single thing in terms of uh, movies or shows that were good, especially for kids, let alone for kids. I remember being in Sunday school and this was during VeggieTales and they'd show us, now that I reflect on it, I'm like, that was like, that was like terrible. Like, and I go and I volunteer at Sunday school uh, this past summer. And I was like, I was like, like we are like the VeggieTales has come out and we're still making this, just, I don't know, very subpar uh, media for our children. And then they grow up and that's their taste. You know, I think it's really bad. That's why we have so much ugh in the media because we grew up with ugh, and that's what our standards are instead of setting it higher. But I forgot what your original question was. Oh yeah, <laughs> Veggie Tales. Veggie Tales. I don't know. I think it just changed the landscape in the '90s, and then as we'll talk, I'm sure we'll talk about more in this interview. In this interview, this back and forth, uh, how Veggie Tales really affected everything, but and how it changed. But originally in the 90s, I mean, it was like the best-selling kids show. They were selling millions and millions upon VHSs. I even have – I don't have any VHS details VHSs. I, I have VHSs, though, and they're – yeah, that's ridiculous to be selling that many. They're so, they're so big. And then you, like, look at a Blu-ray. Anyways, they, yeah, they were just so selling – so, it was ridiculous how many – every time I go to Goodwill, they're all over the place, too, all the VeggieTales VHSs. And they're old packaging, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Like people bought this. I don't know. The packaging wasn't very appealing, in my opinion. All right. Um. So, um, it's just you know, being. I guess what what makes VeggieTales keep keep making you come back, even as an adult? Like that. That's a. It's kind of a hard question, I guess. But I mean, yeah, you know, that's a. I guess a good question for a lot of people. Why? Why are adults even still drawn to this stuff? I mean, I guess it's the classic nostalgia, you know, like thinking like you watch it. Like I watched Where's God When I'm Scared and I was like brought back to my childhood and watching Where's God When I'm Scared. And then and thinking differently of the episode definitely as a kid than I do now. Or as when I originally watched, it, I was like this Frankie and I think it was Frankenstein, the Frankenstein broccoli asparagus, mon whatever he was. I forgot what his name was. <laughs> and I'm sure somebody will correct me. But yeah, the Frankenstein monster, like actually like legitimately, I was like, I don't like this episode as a child, but as an adult, it's like, you know, whatever. But as a child, it's like, this is not one of my favorite ones. Uh, wait, oh, people are drawn to it. Okay, so people are drawn to it. 
I don't know why people are so drawn to it, honestly. I like it because I still think it's funny. And as I'm getting, I actually haven't watched anything past uh, Samson's hairbrush, or not Samson's hairbrush, uh, Sherlock Holmes. I'm not, I'm legit, I'm legitimately stopping myself as each review I do. I'm, I'm stopping myself like that's the last episode I've watched. So I'm not getting ahead and I know what happens later, you know, because I, th I feel like I would get spoiled if I watch the later episode of the animation. It's much smoother and I'm watching. I, I, so I try to like limit myself and just only be like one or two episodes ahead at most. So right now I'm only at Sherlock Holmes. It's like 2006. But I mean, as we get into the 2000s, it's not as consistent. It's very consistent in the 90s. Like it was really, really good. And that's those are episodes that most people remember. But 2000s, you get in those and. It's a lot less consistent, but there's still a lot of good moments and still good episodes. It's just you got to pick through the the ugh, and get to the you know the gold, get to the cream of the crop. Right. I guess. Yeah. But people, I mean, people are probably drawn to it because it's. I mean, it's clean. It's not stupid. It's like SpongeBob. SpongeBob holds up because earlier, I think it was earlier SpongeBob seasons were really like witty and funny, and that's what Veggie Tales is. It's really witty and funny when it wants to be, and those are the episodes that people like the most. Along with the good music, and that's, I mean, I, I personally, I just, I go back to them because they're fun to watch, you know, and I'm not, I don't feel stupid watching them. Like when I watched another show called Caillou, I don't know if we can say the names, but Kai, if I'm bashing on it, Caillou, yeah, I don't like, ugh. Uh, bringing up is, and, and how, um, I guess the writing is actually really strong for a lot of, um, even some of the VeggieTales stuff that, may not be the best animation quality, you know, you still get the, the really good writing. And yeah. um, that, I, I, I hate to say it, but I think that that is in a stark contrast to some of the con contemporary Christian films we may have today. So what the do you story think? Really does, I'm sorry, the story really does trump what, everything. That's, that's what makes them hold up. It's exactly it. It's, it's the story. I mean, they write it so well. And if it wasn't written well, it wouldn't hold up. Um, I mean, as an audience member, it just, it's just simply good on its own merit. Yeah. And it's, and you're right. It was in stark contrast to current day media, it's current day Christian media, especially, I guess that's what we should be comparing it to mostly um, with movies like God's not dead where it's, where it's, you're, you're like amazed. You're like, they clearly have the budget. They have the money. They know what they're doing in terms of like cinematography and everything and editing. And it's not, none of that's bad. It's like, that used to be all issues and it's not so much anymore. It's just the story just flat out sucks, and the writing's just terrible. And you got these flat characters, and it just ruins the production value that you have into it. Whereas Veggie Tales, which is low production value, and it's a much better story, is is more fondly remembered, and it's liked more in general uh, by more people because it's just it's just a better story. It's better written, and doesn't have flat characters. I mean, even though it's a kid show. Whereas you know, God's Not Dead is I guess the it's the dead horse everyone wants to beat, and it's fair enough. Uh, it's just terrible writing. And it's just, it just holds back what could be a good movie if they did it correctly. Exactly. And, I mean, the characters. I mean, if you say Bob the Tomato, I can describe his character. Yeah. You know, I know that I know he's, he's, he's got a big heart, but um, probably gets a little too annoyed, you know, from time yeah. to time. And then you have... Larry the Cucumber, the fun-loving, um, you know, somewhat dim-witted friend to Bob. And those two, can, I mean, it's classic writing. Those two characters, like, automatically go together. And, um, you know, a good experiment for anybody to do, you know, if you want to know if a character's written well or not, ask somebody to describe that character without describing what they look like, mm -hmm. their clothing, Anything like that, just describe yeah. the character itself. And VeggieTales, pretty much every character, you can do that. Archibald, yep. you can do yep. that. Junior, you can do it with him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Junior. <laughs> now, most um, people don't. I don't know if you see yeah. my earlier reviews, but I was like, oh my gosh, Junior's the worst, man. <laughs> it, was, it was Phil Vischer's wife who voiced Junior, and I didn't know that until I got into later reviews, so I was like, I tried to back off a little bit. I was like, okay. I was like, it's voiced by a woman. That explains why the voice sounds the way it does. But I thought it was a man voicing Junior, and, you know, he's got this high-pitched squeal, like, ah, hey, Bob, and it's like, oh, my gosh, no, stop. But, no, it's a woman, so <laughs> it makes more sense. That's It's more squeaky than I would have expected out of a man. <laughs> And Junior exactly. just looks better in general anyways. But yeah, you're right. All the characters, they really do uh, have – they're multidimensional. They're, 
they you've seen you see them in episodes in a good mood, you see them in a bad mood, and you see different uh, sides of their character when they're in these different moods. I would say different uh, whether they're angry, sad, happy, whatever they are. Uh, you get to because Bob when he's happy is like kind of like the you know the straight character, but when he's like annoyed, you see it on his face, and he's like, oh, I hate, I hate like the song uh, at the very end of each episode where it goes. And so we have learned applies to our life. Every time he hears that song, he goes. He just has a <laughs> sullen look on his face, like, and Larry's like, oh, uh, yeah, I love this song. And then, like, as we get into later episodes, Bob's like, I kind of like this song. It's been, like, ten years now, <laughs> if you look at it. But it's kind of the yeah. effect. It's yeah, kind of the start- effect of uh, and a, 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 a parent, you know, watching this. It kind of, they start out like, oh, we got to listen to that song again. Yeah. But then they start, <laughs> they just start singing it out of nowhere. It's like, you know, they're doing their stuff, and they just start singing the song because yeah. it's just a part of, you know. It's slow character development for that one, but yes, it's it's character development nonetheless. That Bob, as, and then the episode I just watched, and the past few episodes I actually watched, he doesn't dislike the song as much. So I don't know. Maybe in later episodes he starts singing along. I'm not sure. <laughs> as I said, I'm only up to 2006. Yeah, and um, oh, there's that echo again. Oh, let me hold the mic right here. Oh, there's my camera. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. But just is that echoing crazy. now? Uh, 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 let me talk. Uh, no, I don't hear the echo. Hmm, that's but now weird. I can't see your face. That's fine. <laughs> that's actually the best part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But uh, we, we talk about how good this stuff is, and then obviously, you know, it is. But it also has some problems. You mentioned some of the animation. Um but one big thing that a lot of people bring up when it comes to VeggieTales is um, um, lack of catechetical value. And, you know, what I mean by that is, is that maybe they don't adapt the story perfectly, you know. And I think my reaction to that would be, or my, my personal reaction to that would be probably that it's probably not in VeggieTales' best interest to adapt, you know, like some of the biblical stories that they do. They don't really adapt them you know, perfectly. They basically take you know the 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 skeleton of the story and make make their own story out of it. And I think that that's something that I've I've done on my YouTube channel as far as encouraging people to do that to use uh, what's taught in scripture as kind of a foundation and then build your own story around it. Yeah. Um. You. I mean, do you think Veggie Tales? Do you think Veggie Tales lacks a certain catechetical value, and is that good or bad? You know, should we should we be concerned with that? I know there's some Christians that they bring that up. They bring up, you know, well, we should be concerned with letting our kids watch this because it's not as theologically astute as some other things. I do know that Phil Vischer uh, later on realized that. Uh, well, I know in a couple episodes they've made fun of the fact that parents were writing in saying, this isn't exactly how the story had it, you know, in the Bible. This isn't exactly how it happened. Well, no, duh, there's vegetables playing out the story. You know, essentially, <laughs> I guess, for children, like, they know what they're doing. Like, it's self-aware. They're on a countertop talking to a camera. Vegetables can't buy a camera. It's not, like, you know. But anyways, it's vegetables playing out a Bible <laughs> story. I don't know how exact you want it to be. If you just wanted a straight story, then just read the Bible. Get, like, the picture Bible and read it for your kids if you want the exact story um but vegetables doesn't do, i mean vegetables doesn't do anything with the stories in terms of like they don't go combining bible stories and changing it like that they don't go changing the message of the story they don't do anything like that they just they change the story and more to, i guess to more i would say modernize but that's not always correct because sometimes they just go back in time but sometimes they do uh modernize it and, but it doesn't change the message. It doesn't change the actual story. They might change some names at most, but usually not. Like, if you watch King George and the Ducky, like, clearly the Bible story isn't about ducks. Like, that's not what King George is, you know. But, but, but that's, like, a really dark story. Like, he tries to kill somebody, and they made it in acceptable for children to watch. Like, Junior has to go into a pie war instead of a real war, you know. And so I'm not sure what, like, if they really want, you know, I don't know. I've never really heard that complaint as, uh, as we've gotten older, but I'm sure back in the day it was a bigger complaint because they do, I don't know which episodes exactly, um, but they do like make fun of the fact that it's not exactly as it would be. Uh, It's kind of like, 
the one the third Austin Powers movie. I forgot which Austin Power movie where he's like goes back in time. He's like, guys, don't take it too seriously. It's just a movie, you know. Like letting you know, like come on, like it's just you know what you're getting into here. But right, yeah. But the value, yeah. yeah sorry, go ahead. No, um, I was just gonna say. I think that there. I mean, I think it's it's it has to do more with story. And like you said, I mean, they're they're appealing to kids. But none of that. I, I think that a lot of people think that they can. You know that anything that has the label Christian on it needs to automatically be a of perfect, you know, catechetical value. Unfortunately, that's not going to replace parents sitting out there tend to act that way. At least in my experience, I know when I was a kid, some of the churches that I went to, uh, that my mom took me to, it it was looking back on it, it kind of felt that way. It kind of felt like well. If it's going to be Christian, then it automatically has to be a substitute or a just as good as sitting down and reading scripture for yourself. And obviously, that's no, that's not what Veggie Tales is meant to do. No. Um, you know, it's meant to entertain and ultimately to lead us back to reading scripture. But you know, it, it's it's entertaining. You know, that that's yeah. the bottom line. And if I think if people look at it that way rather than it, it just says Christian, so it has to be a perfect example. I think that's that's why so many, going back to some of these modern Christian films, you know, they're so afraid of someone not getting the message. You know, yeah. it's like they people have to aren't... Show it in your face. You know, if yeah. they don't show up in your face, oh, you might not get it because you're stupid, you know. It's, it's kind of how it feels with a lot of the movies. Yeah, and and VeggieTales doesn't feel like that. I mean, you know, there can be, a, you know, VeggieTales obviously can have its problems, but overall, VeggieTales doesn't feel like it. You know, you're you're too stupid to get the message, so we're gonna really shove it, shove it in your face that this is really Christian. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have to say Jesus if Jesus isn't part of the story. You know. Sometimes, because, you know, you, I listen to church services. I, this is probably a little bit off, but I listen to church service. I mean, I'm at church service, and, they'll, like, we talk about, like, an Old Testament Bible story, and then all of a sudden Jesus gets put in. And I get what they're doing, but it's like, guys, like, this is Old Testament. Like, now you're going to be, I don't know if you're going to be confusing anybody. I just, I get, like, kind of technical on that. You know, like, Jesus, like, Old Testament, there, Jesus didn't exist. People didn't know about Jesus. They just knew that Christ was going to come one day. But then, I don't know, pastors be merging two things together and i'm surprised nobody gets mad about that honestly but yeah, i'm okay you... with the i'm okay with the theophany stuff because i mean that's mm -hmm. that's pre-incarnate jesus but i get where you're coming from like someone's quoting uh proverbs 3 and you know if they forget to make that beeline to jesus somebody's going to get mad because yeah you know proverbs you know and 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 ultimately all of scripture is about jesus leading up to jesus and everything else but yeah, I get where you're coming from. I mean, it's like, but going back to the VeggieTales thing, I don't think that it's a, a tomato and a cucumber's job to, no, <laughs> to a teach no. teach us perfectly. And it's not Sunday school's job either to teach your kids perfectly. It's up to the parents. It's up to, you know, the guardians. If you're it's whoever's in charge of the children, that's, that's who's in charge of teaching them. It's not Sunday school's job one hour a, a week. It's not or two hours if you go to Wednesday service, I'm sure, however how many hours that is. And it's not it's definitely not VeggieTales' job. Now, I do know Phil, Phil Vischer after, in the recent years, I want to say in the past like five, six years, did do a whole series, and I saw him at Lifeway, of DVDs called What's in the Bible. And it actually is yeah. meant to teach you every single, like not every single thing, but it really gives you a good foundation. So if you're a new Christian, or especially as a chill, child, that's a great series to learn what's in the Bible. It's exactly what it is. What's in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation for kids. Or, um, he says it's for adults too, but I would say it's for kids. It's it's all puppets and, you know, adults really don't know. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, pu yeah. puppets, you know, unless you're, you know, like us and, you know, big man children, then, it, then yeah. it's pretty okay. Uh, even, even, <laughs> even then, the puppets are a little <laughs> bit too cringy for me. Well, but um, getting, I mean, getting back to sort of the, sort of um, what makes VeggieTales unique. Uh, one thing that did make VeggieTales unique, especially in the Christian market, was um, their feature-length film released in theaters, you know, Jonah. Yeah. And, you know, if if you have the DVD of Jonah, you know, 
it, it has that behind the scenes documentary, but there was so many difficulties. This what well, they started production in um, 1998, I think, and that the the film didn't come out. Uh, um, blanking out on the year it came. 2002. It okay. Came out. So, yeah. yeah. It's a, it was like twice it's the budget. It came out too late. It came out the wrong time too. I think it came out like right around uh, maybe Spider Man. I forgot. It was 2002, so it was the summer of 2002. It just came out the wrong time. They should have done it probably like in March or something. You know, when everybody's in school, right. there wasn't other big movies to compete. Uh, but it was. It was. And I saw. A, I have the Blu-ray, and I don't know if it's on the DVD as well. But there's a behind the scenes feature where they're like, it's like as the Jonah movies in theaters, and Phil Vischer's like walking around the office and acting like the movie's doing really fantastic, but. All you have to do is do a quick Google search and find out that even on the first weekend it didn't perform as expected. So, was Phil Vischer lying to us, or was that shot? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not pointing fingers, but I was like, Phil Vischer, you knew better than that. I was like the Veg Shells movie is not doing as well as you thought it was. Um, because I'm as as we might as well point out that pretty much was the straw that broke the camel's back. Veg Shells put too much money into that thing and uh, pretty much sunk the ship and had to sell it to I think it was Classic Media. It was now who now in the long string of buyouts got bought up by DreamWorks. Uh, this point, right. now it's Veggie Shells. Yeah, Big Idea is not in charge of Veggie Shells. Hasn't been since an Easter Carol, which was two thousand four. Yeah, two thousand four was the last time Big Idea actually owned Veggie Shells by themselves. That's you know? kind of a bittersweet thing because yeah. you know here's this this movie they've been working on for a while. You know, working like crazy to get it out and. The movie's actually really good. Mm -hmm. and, I agree. Oh yeah. And and then because of that, you you know all of all of those buyouts had to happen. It, it's it's a, like almost like a bittersweet. Maybe a movie needs to be made on the Jonah movie, like a like one of those biopics oh, or something, because yeah. that would be pretty dramatic. ESPN Thirty for Thirty, the Jonah movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. That wouldn't be related to sports, but something like that. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, cause, yeah, like I said, that that movie was good. Like they, you can tell a lot of hardworking people dedicated a whole bunch of time and effort to make a movie that actually was was good. And he and and uh, even critics, I think it's like at a seventy percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So I'm I'm surprised um, it actually didn't perform as well because Veg. I mean, I guess it was right after VeggieTales peak, so they probably should have started. If they got the movie out a couple years before 2000, I think it probably would have been, it would have done what they expected. It just, I think it probably came out right after the peak, and all, all of us were starting to get older. And not as many, I mean, the generation that grew up with Veg Shells was kind of moving on and getting older, and it wasn't cool anymore. And you have the newer generation, which is really the generation that would go, or the tail end of the last generation that would go. Uh, and I say generation, I mean like 10 years. I don't know how it's actually looked at. I think it's 20, but. The generation of Edge Shells fans, basically, on that one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it really sucks because the movie is good, but it just didn't didn't perform, and it was released at the wrong time. And just a, so if you read Phil Vischer's book, he actually says he actually explains in detail uh, exactly how the entire thing went down and why it didn't work out. And the book was released in 2007, so he doesn't talk about DreamWorks or anything, so don't expect that. But it, it does detail everything that happened. And I do, I do remember very specifically after that Jonah, he had to fire a bunch of people. He had to lay them off because he didn't have the money to keep employing them. Uh, and somebody, I guess, sent an email saying, where is God when I'm f fired, making fun of where is God when I'm scared, the title. Uh, I thought it was pretty clever, but at the same time, I was like, that's probably not an email I would send. Like, you know, you still want them to give you good reference, but. People, right, right. I guess people really did put their heart and soul into it. I mean, why else would you be that upset about being fired? you know, laid off. Yeah, exactly. And it, it it's, um, and maybe that's something that, you know, some, you know, Christian filmmakers or would be Christian filmmakers could take from that too, is that, you know, if you're going to make something worth making, you know, that, that sacrifice may be a possibility because a lot of, you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I think this is more of a story thing, but a lot of people say, well, there's a risk in doing, uh, a good film as a Christian filmmaker, because there may be some things in there that's not going to appeal to the, the base Christian audience and the pushes to, you know, market to that Christian audience. And as far as story goes, uh, what do you think Jonah can offer to those, those filmmakers that say, look, I, I want to be, I, I, I want to be a filmmaker. I'm a Christian, but I don't 
but what about this risk? You know, should I st play it safe or, or not so much? Well, I think if you're going to look at it, the best way to look at Jonah is to compare it to the Pirates movie because the Pirates movie was not fully made by Big Idea, but it's VeggieTales' other movie. It's the other attempt to go in theaters. And it did release in January when there's no other movies. And once again, didn't do as well as it should have. Once again, though, I think you're way past their prime at that point. It was 2008. But with Pirates, they didn't. it wasn't, as, it wasn't really a biblical story. It's about the pirates who don't do anything, which is great, but... There was no like real biblical um, spine foundation to the story. It was just kind of a story about the pirates uh, going on an adventure. If you watch the movie, you'll understand more. Uh, but it, what, if you really want to compare the two, Jonah versus pirates, they both failed, essentially failed, however you want to look at that. But Jonah is the movie I would go back and watch again because it does have it has better writing, better story, but it also it does have the biblical, biblical basis, whereas pirates to me is just a kid's movie starring the pirates who don't do anything. At least Jonah, but Jonah had pirates who don't do anything. They just weren't the main characters. So if I was to go back and watch any of them, it'd be Jonah. Jonah's the better movie. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that was my dog. He's yeah. mad about pirates as well. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, he's mad. He, they didn't do as well as they should have. <laughs> he's like, why not? I wanted three sequels in a movie. Yeah, but yeah, if you wanted, if you wanted to make kids media and you wanted the perfect comparison of whether to go mainstream or just do what you think is right, I would say do what you think is right. But stay within your budget. That's what Jonah didn't do, Jonah, and stay within their budget. Had they stayed within their budget, I think they would have been fine because the budget originally was like nine million bucks, and they actually spent like seventeen. And so if they spent spent nine, they would have made the profit they wanted. So stay if you're gonna do what you think is right, do what you think is right, and stay within your budget. <laughs> don't don't go too crazy thinking you need whatever you need. Visual comparisons. <laughs> All right, the, the Pirates movie, the Jonah movie. They re-released the Pirates movie last year with this different cover. And I was like, oh, sweet. It's Blu-ray. It's not. It's not. Uh, it was what very, a sad, sad thing. It was thing. very big disappointment because I already had it on DVD. I didn't need it. But I bought it on Amazon, and I saw the new cover. I was like, obviously, it's Blu-ray. Like, why else would they re-release it? No, it's DVD, just with a different cover. Very just trying to fool everybody. That's exactly it. Uh, but Just like Phil Vischer did in that, uh, in that little behind-the-scenes thing. I will say that the one thing you should not do if you're trying to promote your film is make this. This is going to this is going to be a whole I don't do reviews for bonus material. Uh, but this is going to be a whole review by itself cuz this is the worst thing that Edge Hills has ever made and I've seen in the house. This is easily the worst. It's this promo they made with real life kids and it is so bad. It is so bad. Mm. Is I mean, if I had saw that I'd be like pirates is ugh, ugh, ugh. It's just, ugh, that's a, it's terrible. And that's a future review. I'll do it before the Pirates movie. And nobody else knows. I guess it's exclusive to this interview. But, yeah, it's, ugh, it's so bad. <laughs> I watched it. I got, like, five minutes in. I was like, no way. I was like, no way. <laughs> and I kept skipping ahead, and I was like, nope, this is real. This entire, like, it doesn't ever get better. So that's going to be a whole review right there. So yeah. if you if you had a seen that before seeing the Pirates movie, would you have just written off the Pirates movie? Uh, um, no. I mean, I I guess I would trust more in the VeggieTales name, uh, but it doesn't it doesn't help because I'm sure that whatever this is, which I got from a local uh, video store for like five bucks or whatever, because I saw it and I was like, never seen this before. I was like, must be I don't know, it must be rare. It's not rare. I found I keep finding it all over the place. Uh, which means that a lot of people did own it, but it must have been Lifeway or something to promote the movie because they talk about, oh, the big movie it's coming up, Pirates, and it's like kids interviewing adults, and the adults act really dumb on purpose, and it's so bad. It's so bad. <sighs> like, oh, I don't goodness. even know why. But anyways, yeah, they must have been put in Lifeway or Christian bookstores to promote the movie, and I think it probably had the opposite effect based off of my own viewing of it. <laughs> yeah, and... Oh, like we said before, VeggieTales is not out its imperfections sometimes. No, yeah, definitely. Uh, but over, but overlooking that, I mean, one of the one of the coolest things about VeggieTales is the silly songs. And you know, for anyone who doesn't know what a silly song is, can you can you explain to the people who have been living under a rock who don't know anything <laughs> and should be re sent to re-education uh -huh. camps what a silly song is? It's it's okay if you don't know. It's not that bad. Probably, I mean, if you're watching this and got this far in the interview, I'd hope you know what Veg Shells is by now. But if you don't, 
I suggest you pause the video or the or podcast or whatever this is and go on YouTube and look up the hairbrush song. If you like the hairbrush song, yes. that is that's the definitive silly song. Everybody knows the hairbrush song. If you like the hairbrush song, then you check out other silly songs. You go from there. You start from the top and find there's more gems. My personal favorite is the monkey song, which is came out in 2007. Uh, but it's definitely my favorite out of all of them. And I've gone through all I've gone through the VeggieTales channel listening to all of them. Pete's Angels, another great one. Pretty much every VeggieTales silly song in the 90s is great. Um, but definitely the hairbrush song is the one to look up. Once you watch that, you have a you have a pretty firm understanding of silly songs. Uh, they that's that's the one point in the show where they're it's not at all biblical. It's just <laughs> I think they were just like, what idea can we do this time and make it into a song? And he's like, well, the other day I lost my hairbrush. He's like, all right, that's it, do it, that's it. And then the other time he's like, dude, the pizza guy came so late. Mo- the song, write it down. I think that's what it came down to at some point. Because some of these songs, like, where did the idea come from? Maybe the pizza was just late that day, and you want to do Pizza Angel. You know, that's 2004, so you might not. Have, I don't know if you've seen it, how far you've gotten. Uh, I know you hadn't said you hadn't seen much past the prime. From no, I- not much, not much yeah. past the prime. But I have passed down my old VHSs to my younger brothers and sisters. Sorry, brothers and sisters. I'm the oldest yeah. of eight kids. So. Oh my gosh, man my my wife has nine siblings, and it's too much. I only got two. <laughs> I'm the weirdo, but yeah. <laughs> well, um, I make I make fun of my wife all the time because she's the oldest of five. So I was like, hey, your parents never did catch up, did they? You know, man, we should probably so, put our social security numbers out there so everybody knows everything. About- <laughs> yeah, why not? Hey, you know, come take my bank account. It's not like there's anything in there. It's zero zero. I'm- <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, well, I mean, just like, you know, some things in this interview, obviously I'm being a little bit facetious with some of the, the questions because it is being, it's being silly. And I think that Veggie Tales captured that in the silly songs and, you know, just, you know, Hey, it's okay to have fun and be entertaining and all this stuff. And I think Veggie Tales did that pretty well. I think we should talk about what everybody's been thinking for the past three years. What is Veggie Tales in the house? Because if we don't talk about that, we've done a disservice to this entire series. Exactly. Yeah. Veg- I don't know if, have you watched any Veggie Tales in the house? On Netflix? Very, very little. Very, very little. little. I've, I've watched. They're now split into 10 minute episodes, but they put two together and call it an episode. So I'll call them episodes in terms of two together. I've watched, I want to say, six or seven episodes now, and it is very inconsistent. Like, there's a couple where I'm like, wow, this could have been a legitimate a- Veg Shells episode had they fleshed it out to 20 minutes or, you know, to 30, 40, 50 minutes, wherever they were. They got to 50 minutes later on. Um, if they fleshed it out, like this could have been a whole like Veg Shells episode. And then there's other ones where I'm like, this is a kid show and a bad one. <laughs> so it's it's really up and down, at least in the first season. I haven't watched second or third season. I haven't gotten to those yet. But Veg Shells in the house, DreamWorks bought it, bought the bought Veg Shells, decided we're not, we're going to change the animation. We're going to make it for a new generation. And all the old fans are upset, but I understand why they did what they did. It wasn't like they didn't like turn the vegetables into candy, you know. They didn't do the extreme <laughs> thing. They did keep they, and it's all the same characters. Uh, they did change a couple. They got rid of Mister Nezer because I guess he was a racist because I guess uh, the right race wasn't voicing him. So they changed Mister Nezer, and he's not fun anymore. And Junior is now voiced by an actual guy, I believe. He sounds like he was voiced by a guy now. Um, uh, yeah, I would say he, was, he is. And it's definitely not Phil Vischer's wife, which is fine by me. I don't hate Phil Vischer's wife, I want to clarify, but Junior sounds <laughs> different. And it's just, it doesn't sound like the same character. They might as well just got rid of Junior because it doesn't sound like Junior, so it's not Junior. But now it's the VeggieTales are living. They're not on the countertop all the time anymore. Now they're, like, on the floor, and now you have more questions. Because originally it was like, okay, maybe the VeggieTales is coming out at night and putting on a show, and the owners are, you know, away in the bed or whatever, you know, sleeping. But now it's like in the middle of the day and they're on the floor and it's like they have homes and stores and there's so many more questions they've added by doing this that, <laughs> that I shouldn't be asking when watching this show. I shouldn't be asking, where are the owners? Are they at work now? So are they up on the countertop at night and then during the day they go to the floor? But how do they have stores and buildings and, and cars and monster trucks? As Larry's obsessed with monster trucks in the series. I don't know. It's just, it adds a lot of questions that I just like have to ignore more so than regular VeggieTales. Um, but it, I guess question. I view it VeggieTales in the House as supplementary. It's kind of like a side series to me because it doesn't 
they don't do Bible parodies anymore, but they do have Bible lessons and they do talk about the verses. So it's not, it's not like they just got away with all of that. It is there. It's just now it's like VeggieTales regular life. So maybe it's, I think of it more as like, this is what the VeggieTales do when they're not doing Bible parodies. And that makes me feel better about accepting the show. I don't accept <laughs> it as the main show anymore. It's not, it's, it's really what are the VeggieTales doing when they're not putting on, you know, the, any Madam Blueberry or, uh, Sherlock Holmes, like what are they doing? This is what they're doing. This is that's my that's is the only answer I can think of. And the new redesigns, I'm okay with except for the eyes. They added color to the eyes, and I think that's what weirds everybody out because we're used to just the black dots, and then they added blue yeah. to like Bob, and Bob's red, so now he's like Spider Man with his red, white, and blue. I don't know, he's like America, um, but he's he's weird to look at. But you know, Vegetables in the House, everybody hates on it. They have had three seasons, so it must be successful enough. Though I've heard rumors that it's on hold or on hold usually means cancel, but it's on hold right now. So I don't know what's happening there. And we haven't had a regular Veg Shells episode since 2015 with Noah's Ark, which had the new designs as well. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure if if it didn't, I don't know if it's not doing as well as it once did because it, the name doesn't ca- matter anymore because they've kind of diminished it within the house. Or what's, I really don't know what's going on and I haven't got that far yet um, in terms of like the regular episodes. So I don't know if the regular episodes just got bad or what happened? Uh, hopefully, we get we return back to regular episodes, but I wouldn't mind them see, seeing them do regular Veggie Tales, but Netflix, like, and like you know, by like they don't have to be 30, 40, 50 minutes long, but I wouldn't mind them going back to regular Veggie Tales, but the amount of episodes they're doing for Netflix that would be that would be so much, but it'd be awesome. Exactly. Yeah, I I I found it kind of funny that um, when. The, the whole redesigns came out, right? I remember actually reading online, you know, some some VeggieTales fans being, oh, this is ruining VeggieTales. You know you know how the internet yeah. is. It's ruining VeggieTales. Oh, my the, child. The design's is- horrible. And, yeah, the design, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, the designs, yes, I can understand people not liking the new designs. But I think in comparison to the whole um, – you know, the world building problem and, you know, now they're out there. All those questions that we now have um, with this new series is like, okay, the character designs are pale in comparison to all of the other things they introduced uh, technically. (laughs) I mean, but the thing that, the thing that gives me a little bit of hope is just like, just like everything on the internet, you know, things go downhill for a lot of people. Oh, the character designs, I hate them. And then all these questions, but I think people are rediscovering the old Veggie Tales in a sense because of this. So, with that being said, I mean, what do you think is the future of, you know, this beloved, you know, childhood uh, cornerstone for a lot of us? Well, what do I think is the future, and what do I want to be the future? Are probably two different things. What I think is the future is probably more Veggie Tales in the house. I, I mean, I'm sure it's on hold, but. I'm sure what they're trying to figure out is do we do less episodes or do we cut the budget and just spend less money making it? Or I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Obviously I don't have any insider information and even Phil Vischer, if you watch his uh, or listen to his podcast, I watch it on YouTube. Uh, he doesn't have any insight either. So he actually hasn't had any insight for the past 12 years. I think ever since he sold the, them veg shells, he doesn't know anything. He just voices Bob and a couple other characters and that's about it. Shows up, gets paycheck and goes home. He is not Last episode he wrote was Wizard of Oz, which was a Wizard of Oz parody in 2007. So if he doesn't know, I don't know. And my only guess is that I think they'll continue to do In the House until it just isn't worth their time making anymore. And then I don't know. DreamWorks, though, they have, if you go on Netflix, they have a lot of series based off their movies, animated series. Like they have one on Puss, Puss in Boots, who hasn't been popular in forever, but there's a whole show on him. So I'm sure the vegetables in the house could have its own show still if they wanted to. What I want to happen, obviously, is them to stop it and just make regular episodes. But I don't think DreamWorks really cares. They, whichever one makes the most money is what they're going to do. Do you see any sort of like nostalgic resurgence of VeggieTales in the near future? Or do we have to wait a few more years for that? Uh, nostalgic resurgence? I don't know. I'm kind of I'm trying to kickstart that right now, but uh, pro- probably not. It's. I don't know. I don't know how a resurgence would happen, I guess. Um, we get it with – for some reason, somehow we got it with Power Rangers. Figure that one out. They have a new movie coming out next year. So I don't I – don't, maybe because Nickelodeon bought – that's a whole different story. Nickelodeon bought them back a few years ago from Disney. But even then, like, that doesn't make sense to me. If we get, But if we can have that, I guess we could have a resurgence of VeggieTales. I just don't know how it happened. 
I really I don't know at all. It would have they would have to do something to fix to I don't I don't just don't know anymore. Well, Dream well remember with, <laughs> yeah, re remember with God all things are possible. So you know let let's hope that there is some sort of resurgence of Veggie Tales soon. Yeah, oh, I'm all for it. Or or you know I'm okay with if a new show came along, Christian media a new show came along for kids that brings back the wit and the story. If somebody else wants to do it, go for it. It just can't be Veggie Tales. But if somebody else wants to do it, pff, I'd be on board. I would show. I mean, I don't have any kids yet, but when I do, I would. You know, I'm on. Somebody else could do it. That would be the resurgence. I think would have to be probably through another show. And I'm actually surprised Phil Vischer didn't do, just do that. But I think he was more concerned with reflecting and seeing that Veggie Tales didn't have all the. I guess it 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 was more. Sometimes it was more about funny and less about story and less about biblical lessons than he wanted. So he focused on fixing his mistake he thinks in terms of what's it with what, what's in the bible but i don't know somebody's gonna have to i'm sure somebody with the way computers are now and how cheap this technology can be uh in terms of making your own show i'm sure somebody might come along here and, and do it you just don't know it's can, can they get the right writing is the question because i'm almost positive as much as i hate to say this pure flex pure flex might actually <laughs> fund it if it was if it was acceptable by their standards, but I don't like their standards. Um, yeah. But I, if anybody was to do it, I almost feel like it'd be pure flex as awful as that is to say. Well, I I guess we can only speculate at this point. Yeah, I guess. We, we're, nobody knows. <laughs> but if there's resurgence. I would I would put my money if we were all betting on pure flex doing it. As weird as that is. Oh. Well, who knows? I mean, there's there's so many things that could happen, but like I said, with God, all things are possible. True. So we got to remember that. But uh, I think nightly prayers to pray for veggie. <laughs> <laughs> please, Hashtag please, veggie Lord, tales. let veggie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm starting that hashtag up uh, right now as we speak. Do it. Hashtag, hashtag veggie tales. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what we should have all been hashtagging. In fact. Yes, it's, actually, it's really funny. If you do want a good laugh, to go on the Veggie Tales official Facebook page and just um, go to their images because that's the quickest way to go back in time and go back to 2013 and look at the images of when they unveiled the new designs and everybody's freaking out. It's it's actually mm -hmm. really it's really funny to read. I get a kick out. Very of it. entertaining. <laughs> I'm just saying, if somebody's got you know like 10 minutes to burn, it's a good 10 minutes to burn. Exactly. <laughs> so I think um, I think we're maybe running out of time a little bit. Uh, where can everybody find you if they want to know more about VeggieTales, if they want to see all your awesome VeggieTales reviews? Where can we find you? Uh, what's your home address? Let's stalk you. You know, make sure that you know, you're doing everything about VeggieTales right. Well, I live in uh, Australia, obviously. <laughs> no, uh, my YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Christian Nutrition Show? Question mark. I think it's Christian Nutrition. It's Christian Nutrition if you look it up on YouTube. I just don't know what the URL is exactly. Um, and I do. I review every single episode. Right now, I'm on hiatus. I did just get married. Ah, ring. Anyways, uh, I just got married. Congratulations. So I am putting up episodes every other weekend still. It's just they're not full reviews because I don't have the time at the current moment. However, comma, I am working on a side series on the same channel with my wife, and we're going to be reviewing. Um, I originally, the idea was to just do children's movies, but... We were, we were decided, why not do Christian movies, some Christian movies as well, not not all of them, but some of them, because there are some that are good, and there are some that are notable, whether good or bad. And so we're actually, in, in August, I believe, her and I will be starting, we're calling it CN Movies, and this is, no one knows about that yet either. CN Movies, uh, and we'll, that'll be a side series we're going to be doing, I'm not sure what the frequency of it, but we do have, we've watched a bunch of kids' movies, we got notes, we're going to like, it's, it'll be more of an informal review than my regular reviews of Chris of uh, VeggieTales, but yeah, yeah, bat, <laughs> I do. I review every VeggieTales episode. There's a ton of content. Anybody who hasn't seen my channel yet, and you're new, so you don't have a lot of content yet, as far as I'm aware. No, but, no, not yet. Yeah, no, but I am working on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, when say goodnight, Kevin. I think it's probably how most people heard about you. I don't. What do you even yeah. say? Yeah, he said something about you that, and I was like, oh, I gotta go check it out, and I did, and here I am. <laughs> Putting everybody onto my dastardly plans, you know. <laughs> he said, "Well, I forgot what he said about you. What was it that?" I think he he was playing along because it was the the parody video I did, and 
Oh, when you made fun of he he was Kevin playing along, he's like, I got, yeah, yeah, I got, like, I got, I got exposed. <laughs> I remember that because he did like two or three videos. Yeah. <laughs> it was you, and it was this other guy. The other guy I did not subscribe to because their guy was legit. Make like blimey, cause the devil, and they're not Christian. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I was like the the way that that actually happened was that. I was making a video response to that guy already. Like oh. I was in, in the process of doing it. And then Sega Night Kevin put out his video reacting to it in that kind of leafy is here yeah. style that he did. And I was like, oh, no, he beat me to it. And I had <laughs> known about this. and I, I had no idea. So I was yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to let Kevin have it. So yeah. I'm just going to parody him and, <laughs> or, and basically work. parody the other guy, you know? And yeah. um, <laughs> so... I got popular for spiting Say Goodnight Kevin. In a so parody. everyone should do that now. Yes. Everyone, if you wanted to get famous and get over 100 subscribers, just hate on Say Goodnight Kevin extensively yeah. to the point where he has to make a video about you. And yeah, don't worry about sub botting. Yes. Don't worry about um, putting um, sub inappropriate thing. thumbnails. Yeah. yeah don't worry about any of that. <laughs> just spite someone on YouTube who's much bigger than you are. It's so it's so bad how true that is. Just just <laughs> just start just start start something with somebody. So start something with somebody big. Just pick a big name. Just hate on them somehow. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that is them or not. Yes, that is that is the advice every new YouTuber needs to have. Yeah. How do you think I moved into this nice place that you can barely see? It's from hating on everybody. <laughs> My two hundred fifty subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> So much YouTube cash, you guys. I bought Jonah on Blu-ray for like six bucks. <laughs> no. I'm trying to pick up my uh, next Lamborghini. I have so much YouTube money. You know? Yeah, man. I can Just tell. Saying. You got like purple yeah. on your walls? I mean, nobody can. That's royalty. Royalty. I know, right? Look at that. <laughs> it's amazing. Look at that microphone yeah. right there that's totally expensive and, you know, Costed me like a zillion dollars. Everybody can be a YouTube star. It's, guys, it's so easy. You just you just don't know how easy it is. I spend almost no time doing this. <laughs> yeah, I just lay back and take your money. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I, just, I just put on the camera and the video just happens. <laughs> that just edits itself into me talking. And the video just uploads <laughs> on its own. And I just sit back and laugh. Yeah, I'm oh taking your money. I think you. I, I mean, I don't think anybody knows me. I'm like every single episode between writing and scripting and shooting, that sucker takes me like nine hours, at, at least. Depends on the episode. Oh my gosh! Like I didn't realize. Like at first, I was like, "Oh, this would be easy," you know, like Veg Tales. That's easy. And then I like actually did a couple episodes. I'm like, "Wow, it's gotten easier as I've gone along." But the amount of time it goes in each episode, no one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's no, it's no easy feat doing doing the full reviews. Oh yeah, I, some of some of my friends when they found out that I uh, was gonna do YouTube videos, they're like, "Oh, you can monetize that stuff, and you know, you can have a career." I was like, "Yeah, but they're they're offering a job digging ditches over there too, so that would probably be a lot easier." <laughs> probably get, pay more. <laughs> yeah, probably pay more too. So I'd rather have the ditch digging job than doing yeah. YouTube videos. I just like doing them; they're fun. I yeah, that's exactly why I started doing it. Um, was to get most people probably don't know it. The reason I started was to get a handle on. I guess I got new camera equipment, and along the way, if you start from my first video and get my last one, you see like the progression in terms of image. Oh, my wife's coming in. In terms of image quality and lighting and audio and everything. Hello, you look very happy. Ah, don't talk. I love you. <laughs> no. Just get married a week and a half ago. Sure, he hates me. I'm just kidding. But anyways, uh, that first argument yeah, right there over you. I, I started for fun and I monetized it later on because I realized like for every thousand views, I think you had a dollar, but I'm like, I don't want to monetize when I get bigger. And then all of a sudden everybody's like, oh, now there's ads. You know, when everybody would actually get upset and notice, I did it before <laughs> everybody would notice. <laughs> I just, you just monetize it from the beginning. The radar. And nobody, yeah, put the, put the expectations lower and then people won't expect more. That's what you got to do. Start low and just stay there. Yeah. <laughs> If I unmonetize, people get too happy. Yeah. Get the reputation of he was always a sellout from the beginning, yeah. and then yeah. people won't expect more. Yeah, exa exactly. If people expect me to sell out, then when I sell out, it'll be like, yeah, that's that's what he just does, you know? Yeah, it's just, he just lacks money. What's wrong with that? DreamWorks feeds me money constantly to review these Veggie Shells episodes. There's like, here's $1,000. Uh, and I'm like, thank you, DreamWorks. 
<laughs> that no, that's not true, guys. I'm not sure if that's a legal issue if I say that. <laughs> no, DreamWorks has never paid me any money ever. But you can if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free, free advertisement right there. I won't, I won't stop you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll oh, review vegetables in the house, and I will say positive things. <laughs> yeah, he is willing to be paid off. Critics, it's okay. Off. No. She's okay, uh, so. Your YouTube channel, Christian Nutrition, reviewing all sorts of veg- all the veggie tail stuff oh, in chronological order. order. Yes, in chronological. That's the big thing in chronological order. Yes. So if you get something wrong, everyone, everyone will, will attack you. Yes, yes, it's already happened. I'm, I'm, I have already gone to church and prayed for forgiveness for messing up that one time. So, yeah, I'm a Lutheran, so I have to go to confession. So yes, you better get in that box and confess. Yeah, <laughs> I got to. Uh, I watched a Christian New Order. Please forgive me. <laughs> I reviewed Lord of the Beans before I did before I did Mini So Cute. I'm so sorry. <laughs> God's like only this one time will I let that go. I'm like thank Man, you. Man, that's pretty serious. Yes, that's that's super serious. <laughs> yeah, the deleted scene from Exodus is the eleventh commandment: Thou shalt not review Veggie Tales wrongly. <laughs> You're talking about? Th- I never saw that movie. Well, that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> Purposely All right. Time. All right. Thank you, sir, for being on. This has been amazingly wonderful. And it is, it's awesome to just talk about this stuff, to talk about uh, stuff we like from our childhood. If you got one more thing to say to everyone watching and listening, what is it? Hashtag pray for veggie tales, obviously. <laughs> yes. Hashtag pray for veggie tales. Hashtag people. Yes. Do it. Get on the Twitter. Get on. Oh, yeah, I'm I on know, these kids. I failed to mention that, but I'm not on Twitter because I don't understand it. I mean, like, I get the concept. I just don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I've, been looking, I've been looking for alternatives to Twitter, and no one's came up with any. You, you'd think that, that, yeah. Uh, you know what? No denomination. No denomination may come between us, but this will. Yes, the Twitter <laughs> versus Facebook. Twitter we'll set up that Facebook. debate. New Twitter versus new Twitter. No Twitter. Yeah. Hashtag no, no Twitter. Twitter. No I Twitter. Go to Twitter and hashtag no Twitter. <laughs> hashtag no Twitter on Twitter. On Twitter, yes. Teach them a lot. Ban Twitter from Twitter. <laughs> all right, yeah, it's been tons of ton of fun though. I, you know, and all our good jazz. What are things we're supposed to say when we sell out? Um, I I'm with Loot Crate and Crunchy Roll, <laughs> and I just get money all the time, you guys. Just constant. From advertisers. Yes. 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 Oh my gosh. Brother, wake up next to a stranger. The way.